It can take a variety of investment approaches to build your financial future, but how? Here's what matters. Live from New York, I'm Lauren Goodwin, and this is Market Matters from New York Life Investments. In this podcast, we bring you the best insights from across the New York Life Investments platform because we believe that by sharing perspectives and engaging with you, our listeners, we can all become better investors. Welcome, everybody. It's the week of September 11th, 2023, and this week we conclude, at least for now, our very special Financial Futures series, which has been exploring the great question of how investors prepare and pursue their financial futures. We've discussed the roles of life insurance and annuities in the past few weeks, and this week we're circling back to investing, but we're going to take a look at it very differently from how we normally do on the pod. Our team is an asset allocating team. We're thinking about how to invest from the asset allocation, asset class, and portfolio construction vantage points. We do all of this on behalf of our clients, but before we can do our job there, clients have a very important role in determining where they want to invest in the first place, and doing so by determining their financial goals and investment goals, considering what is called outcomes-based investing can be a critical step here. It's also a key and sometimes harrowing question for many investors. How do I set these goals that you're always talking about? What do I need to know or think about before approaching a financial professional? So to guide us through these questions, we've called upon Jose Barros, the COO, Chief Operating Officer of U.S. Distribution at New York Life Investments. In other words, the investment outcomes guru. Welcome, Jose. Thank you, Lauren. And and thank you for inviting me to be a guest on your podcast. A big fan of the Market Matters podcast. I really appreciate the invitation. Oh, well, what a great way to start out, Jose. Thank you. Uh, Your title has a lot of stuff in it, Jose. And so I'd like to just first ask you about your role and your team. What's your central focus? Yep. So at Nylum, we work very closely with financial advisors and New York Life agents. They are essentially our clients. And our goal is really help them solve for their client outcomes with our investment solutions. And within that broader goal, I'm, as you mentioned, the Chief Operating Officer of uh, U.S. Retail Distribution, which involves overseeing the day-to-day operational functions of our business, working with our senior leadership team to help create and execute on our strategy and vision for distribution. And at the end of the day, the goal is really to make sure that our business is moving in the right direction, uh, that our entire team has all the resources they need to operate in the most efficient manner to support growth. Uh, In addition to this, I am directly responsible for leading the DCIO sales team. DCIO stands for Defined Contribution Investments Only, uh, and their primary responsibility is to sell our mutual funds to retirement plan providers uh, so that our funds can be made available on 401ks, 403bs, or other retirement accounts. In addition to that, or lastly, I should say, um, I also have the pleasure of working with the agency sales team whose primary, primary responsibility is to distribute our investment solutions to New York Life agents as well. Mm-hmm. Well, in addition to this impressive lineup of responsibilities, we can't help but mention, Jose, that you're a dad, and we want to make a specific and special shout out to your oldest jo- daughter, Jolissa. If you're listening, we want you to know that we work closely with your dad, and he's <laughs> a great friend of ours. <laughs> Good luck as you head off to college. Uh, Getting back to the matter at hand, Jose, uh, you have a rich background of experience at New York Life Investments. And frankly, this is something that we see with our speakers and most successful contributors to the firm, this breadth of experience across the platform. So can you tell us a little bit of how you got to this impressive role and set of responsibilities, what your background's like? Sure. I've, I've been in the industry for 25 years. 23 of those years have been here at New York Life Investments. I started my career as an entry-level position, uh, what was called an inbound specialist, uh, learning the business. Eventually, I became an internal wholesaler covering several territories across the country. Uh, And I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of great mentors over the years. They've shared their successes and their knowledge. And through that experience, I realized that I enjoyed mentoring. I enjoyed coaching and developing, but I also still wanted to remain in a sales role. Um, So I decided to go down the management track where I started as a team leader, uh, an assistant manager, and then eventually became the head of our internal sales team. And that was a bit of a full circle moment for me where 
Uh, again, I started an entry level position and years later had the opportunity to lead that team, work with a lot of really talented individuals, but also learn how to become an effective manager and ultimately find my voice as leader. And that ultimately led me to uh, other opportunities like CO, where I've been able to work uh, with other teams within distribution like DCIO agency and also work previously in relationship management. So um, it's been quite a journey, but um, one that I'm very grateful for. Certainly quite a journey. And I don't want to speak for you, Jose, but I can only imagine that having opportunities and experiences in different parts of the business like this allows you to really understand when you're hearing client concerns where they're coming from. And we certainly in our work with clients try to have our ear to the ground um, and, and understand their key challenges, their key questions. But I'm curious to hear from you what you're hearing. What are some of the primary questions and concerns you're hearing from financial professionals, financial advisors, and agents right now um, about the current macro environment and investing? Yeah, I mean, look, there's still a lot of uncertainty within the investment community. You know, although markets have rebounded so far this year compared to last year, and investors aren't as confident about the outlook from a macro standpoint. You, most of that is driven by, as you all know, uh, the inflationary environment that we experienced coming into this year. Although inflation has tamed a bit since its peak, the Fed is continuing to raise rates or there's still conversations about raising rates. And that's driving concerns about potentially a recession. You add in the fact that there's a lot of, there's some geopolitical, geopolitical concerns uh, that still exist and combine all of that, um, there just isn't as much appetite for risk. And so we spent a lot of time talking about how to navigate in this current interest rate environment, how to allocate into areas that are less sensitive to a rising rate environment, but also emphasize the importance of downside protection with our investment portfolios. Well, normally on the podcast, we think about topics just like this, right? How to manage the fear or the uncertainty around investing and stay focused on financial goals. And a lot of times we'll be thinking about traditional portfolio construction techniques like the 60-40 or 60% equity, 40% bonds portfolio or whatever the topic of the day might be. But that's the latter part of the investment process, which really begins with setting financial goals in the first place. And for many, that process of meeting with a financial professional, identifying their goals, it can be really confusing. I use the word harrowing at the top of the program, and I, I think it really can be even for people with financial background. When it comes to your own money, setting those goals is really hard. And so this is where I think the, the real juice of having you on the show, Jose, comes in. At a high level, how might someone going to visit a financial professional think about this? You're right, Lauren. I mean, it is confusing. It can be confusing and a harrowing experience. And so it's so important to do your homework beforehand. Before you meet an advisor, think about what you're looking to achieve. As you mentioned, just think about more of the outcome rather than looking at specific asset class you should be investing in or specific returns. Leave that for the financial professional to help you with that. But this concept of outcome-based investing takes into consideration your entire financial picture. It incorporates your assets, your liabilities, and other personal considerations when you think about your, your financial goals, right? Are you looking to generate income? Are you looking to preserve your capital? Are you looking to fund any liability? Uh, but also takes into account your risk tolerance. How much risk are you willing to take? But more importantly, what risk may prevent you from achieving your desired, out desired outcome? And then lastly, you know, what's your time horizon? Are there some short-term goals that you're looking to meet? Uh, or some longer term goals like retirement that you're looking to meet. And so once um, this is all gathered and through this process, a financial advisor or New York Life agent will create a personalized investment solution that's really tailored to your unique needs and objectives that will eventually include asset allocation and portfolio construction with asset classes, as you mentioned. And so it's really thinking about what outcomes you're looking for. What are some of the things that um, you're concerned about, you know, whether it's inflation, whether it's you know, living your, uh, your, your savings, uh, think about those type of things before you meet with an advisor and, and they can kind of walk you through what are the right you know, solutions and plans for you. I want to just highlight some of what you're saying, Jose, because it's so, so important that for most people, starting with the things that you need 
in your financial future is really an important place to start. Maybe it's saving up money for retirement and maybe that retirement's three years away or 30 years away. It makes a difference. You mentioned time horizon. Or maybe it's saving up for retirement, but in the next couple of years, you've got some kids to send to college. These are the types of financial goals that can help a financial professional really help set the right mix of solutions and opportunities that are right for the cash flow needs that you have in your future. And when we talk about that mix, Jose and Lauren, what are some of the goals that your team works to help clients achieve once all those considerations are taken into account? So as I mentioned before, our, our goal is really to help the financial advisors solve their client outcomes. And if you can imagine, there are a multitude of concerns that clients have to take into consideration. And there are so many solutions that advisors have to consider to address those concerns. Uh, and to help address that complexity, uh, we've created a simple framework uh, that for the most part addresses five of the most uh, major or main concerns that clients are looking to address. And then we actually plot some products and ideas that uh, an advisor can consider to help create this personalized investment plan mm -hmm. for, their, for their clients. And the framework is what we call LIVIT, L-I-V-I-T. Um, the L is for longevity. Again, it's not just about growing your money, but it's also about ensuring that your know, clients don't outlive their savings. Income generation uh, is the I. We help clients find strategies to generate income uh, in this rising rate environment. Uh, volatility management. Um, how can we help smooth out the ride within these client portfolios? Again, managing that downside risk that I talked about previously. Uh, potential inflation protection. Um, you know, again, when you're building this portfolio in this environment, how are we protecting against this inflationary environment? And then lastly, tax conscious investing. You know, how do we help minimize tax the tax burden for those clients who are concerned about that? And, and the beauty about this framework is that it's product and vehicle agnostic. And so while we plot our products and ideas that are both mutual funds and ETFs, uh, advisors and agents can use other products or other vehicles like annuities to, um, for their clients. At, at the end of the day, it's really about uh, what's right and suitable for their clients. Um, and this is just a simple framework that brings that dynamic between addressing the major concerns that the clients might have mm -hmm. and the solutions that make the most sense against that. That Live It framework is simple and powerful. And I want to hone in on two of those letters a little bit more, starting with the V, volatility management. Now, a lot of people can forget that volatility goes to both the downside and the upside. And we've seen both this year, depending on the asset class. Can you give us an example of how focusing on that volatility management goal can serve a broader purpose in a client's portfolio? Yeah, look, volatility management is extremely critical to understand um, the importance of that downside protection, really. At its core, we all know investing is really about growing your wealth, but not losing money is equally essential. Uh, major drawdowns like we saw last year can severely damage an investor's capital and can take a disproportionately longer time to recover for some of those losses. So for example, a 50% loss requires a 100% gain just to break even. And just think about how much time it'll take to actually get back there. And uh, think about the lasting effect of that. If there's someone who's near retirement or uh, someone were to retire following a significant uh, market downturn, they may need to withdraw a larger portion of a reduced portfolio to cover some of their expenses, or they might increase the risk about living their savings. So it's really important to understand how your investments are protecting against the down markets. Uh, and that's really when we think we focus on when we talk about volatility management, it's just that downside protection in your portfolios. All right. And just as important as the potential for volatility management there, I want to move on to the, the eye of this framework, the potential for inflation protection goal. Now, obviously, inflation has played a key role in our daily lives and investing for over a year. And though nothing can guarantee protection against inflation, there are some traditional ways to buttress against it. What asset classes, Jose, should potentially be considered in service of that goal? Well, they're, they're, from a solution standpoint, we have a lot of conviction in several asset classes and categories. Uh, within the equity space, we like areas like global infrastructure. Uh, it's an excellent way to capture some of the longer term secular trends that are less sensitive to an inflationary environment. 
from a fixed income standpoint, we like solutions like short duration, high yield, municipal bonds, infrastructure bonds as well. Uh, they all tend to do well in an inflation environment. Specifically with infrastructure, we like taxable municipal bonds. They're a great complement to a core bond allocation, help balance duration while also participating in those long infrastructure themes. Uh, they provide higher credit, credit quality and a diversified credit exposure. So those are just some of the uh, solutions that we have conviction around in this type of environment, specifically for inflation. Well, that has been an amazing summary of all the different types of goals that can be considered here, and specifically how you use that framework to drill into more of the asset allocation and asset class arguments like you just did. I want to pivot back to a few of the questions that Lauren asked you toward the top about your experience at Nylum. I would love to know what is your favorite part of the job, Jose? In every job, you have your busy work. You have to spend most of your time you know, getting tasks done, getting projects done, which are very important. Uh, but for me, I always look forward to the opportunities where I get to interact with my direct reports, my peers, our clients. Uh, nothing beats that human connection, especially in this environment, and making sure that you know, I'm providing support or guidance that uh, my team needs, um, you know, hear through and walk through and guide them through some of the challenges, but also celebrate our personal accomplishments, our career accomplishments. Um, I think those are probably the most rewarding moments for me. And I also get to do pretty cool things like being on a podcast as well, which is uh, always a little bit different. So I would say that. Well, we're certainly lucky to have you, Jose, both in the business and on the pod. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Coming up next, we'll get back to the markets by sharing our outlook for the rest of the year. But that's it for today. We'll be back next week for more Market Matters. In the meantime, please remember to give us a like, follow, or review wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have a question or topic of interest, reach out to us on LinkedIn. You can also follow our views at newyorklifeinvestments.com and click the Insights tab. Until then, I'm Lauren Goodwin, and we'll see you next time.